Welcome back to the Tallahassee Civic Center where we have completed qualifying in this special four-truck invitational monster truck showdown. And we are now ready for the first round of side-by-side -side eliminations in a field that had four trucks separated by less than 80 thousandths of a second in qualifying. And we've already had a little mishap down at the starting line as Ray Perkowski runs over one of the water buckets used to keep the dust down on the monster truck starting line, but that certainly won't affect things. Perkowski, you may remember, was the number three qualifier at 2.33 seconds, literally two hundredths of a second slower than this young man. The pole qualifier, 19-year-old Greg Holbrook in the rear-engine GMC-bodied equalizer of Gary Cook out of Tennessee. Now remember, this is an extremely short monster truck course, but it is going to place an incredible amount of importance on the driver's ability to leave the starting line after the green light comes on as quickly as possible. Driver reaction time will most likely play an important part in this four-truck invitational showdown. From a Shiro Labs time standpoint, Ray Perkowski knows the Invader Ford can hold its own against the Equalizer. But any advantage a driver can gain on his opponent off the starting line, any reaction time advantage, is money in the bank off the starting line. Look at the intensity on the face of 19-year-old Greg Holbrook. If looks could kill, this kid would have already knocked out the entire field. Now the signal goes out the stage, Perkowski waiting patiently, the crowd cheering the Chevy driver as he moves to the starting line. And we're ready for the first battle here in Tallahassee. The visor comes down, both drivers intensely concentrating on the green light. An incredibly close battle. Certainly on this short course, we knew we were going to see some tight finishes, but that one was just flat too close to call. And the numbers have something to say about the outcome of this race, too. On the replay, we'll be able to see that the Invader got a whole shot of 89 thousandths of a second. But at the finish line, it was a 2.27 second to 2.39 second win for the kid. The finish line difference. 17 thousandths of a second. The Invader heads for the pit, and the kid in the Equalizer advances to the final round. On previous editions of Super Track, we've had a chance to meet the intergalactic traveler known as Vorian. But here's how Vorian gets his power. My name's Francis Felford, and my nickname's Tanky. Uh, that comes from my uh, complexion in the summer. Uh, what I'm going to do is make some hand rockets for Vorian, the robot. Uh, I use a combination of concussion powder and sparkle powder, and these are electrically fired with electric matches. This will produce a flash effect with some sparkles and a moderate amount of noise, which is uh, used for Vorian's rockets. Basically, these are the same type of materials that are used in larger aerial shells as far as edge war fireworks. Um, we place the igniters in. They're sealed with an interlocking cap. And it's ready to be placed in the robot. There's some other devices that we're going to use during the show. Vorian, which is sitting here on the table. The tall cylinders are uh, concussion mortars. Uh, they'll be loaded with uh, magnesium powder and uh, will produce a extremely loud report. The uh, shorter, wider uh, devices, the flash pots, they'll be loaded with sparkle powder and uh, flash powder to produce uh, another effect. It should be understood that these are controlled materials and devices, and that I am federally licensed, and this is not something you should try at home. At the risk of leveling your home. Speaking of leveling things, we've got monster truck, car crushing action, and championship pulling. Still to come on Super Tracks. Stay with us. We're back 
in Tallahassee, Florida, as we continue the semi-final round of our four-truck invitational monster truck shootout that has truly turned into a gun-flinging contest. The driver with it's quicker on the draw has a definite advantage here. It'll be Ron Dennis in the no-problem Ford Bronco and John Moore. The number two qualifier, remember he only qualified a thousandth of a second behind the number one man. Taking on the number four qualifier, Rob Morris and the four-wheel crazy Ford Ranger. But remember, there was all of eight hundredths of a second difference between first and last in this qualified field. Dennis lines up on the crush cars themselves, trying to find a good line across those cars. He has kept this truck relatively low to the ground during competition so far, rather than trying to vault the entire distance of the course, which has been Rob Morris's technique. Dennis in the far lane backs it up behind the line as Morris seems more concerned with finding a good spot on the dirt starting line to line up. Traction, of course, just as important to these machines as any other in motorsports. Dennis, the relative newcomer in only his second weekend out at the helm of John Moore's No Problem Bronco. And now it's time for the white and yellow Ford to prove itself against the driver voted the 1990 Rookie of the Year. Both machines have apparently staged. The driver's intensely concentrating on the green light, and now Dennis has apparently decided he needs to rethink his starting line attack. Rob Morris waiting patiently as now the ground crew and official starter begin to motion Dennis up to the starting line. Hopefully he's set because the green light is ready to flash. Dennis still having problems on the starting line. This may be more than just his concern about where he's lined up on the line. He may actually be having some kind of drivetrain problem with the big Bronco. Certainly a harried look in the cockpit. And Dennis now finally begins to inch the machine up towards the starting line proper. Not only is there apparently a problem with the no-problem machine, ironically enough, but obviously this has got to be playing on the mind of Rob Morris in the big blue four-wheel crate as well. And another insanely close matchup. Literally, again, a dead-even finish. We'll have to look at the replay. And on that replay, you can see the whole shot by Dennis in the no problem for it. An 88 thousandth of a second advantage off the starting line. And at the finish line, the no-problem machine actually went slower. 2.31 seconds to a losing 2.22 second run for Rob Morris. The difference at the finish line, how about eight thousandths of a second? And Rob Dennis goes to his first ever U.S. Hobbit Association Championship final round against the kid in the equalizer. It will be wild. But speaking of wild, you saw Vorian earlier. Now, watch Vorian take on his ultimate nemesis, Robosaurus. It's the ultimate battle, Vorian versus Robosaurus. And you have to admit, it's unbelievable. And so is the action yet to come. Stay with us on Super Tracks. 